So I'm Peter Jones, I am the Support and Releases Manager for WAM Cloud, and I'm going to talk to you today about um, recent developments and upcoming plans for Lustre releases. So first of all, I'm going to talk about uh, just a refresher on the terminology we use for releases. Then I'm going to cover each of the active code lines and finally wrap up with the latest um, roadmap. So first of all, with uh, release stream uh, terminology. So we have two kinds of releases. We have uh, feature releases, which are our delivery mechanism for um, all the ongoing uh, Lustre feature development that takes place. Uh, these come out on a six monthly basis, and with these we increment the second digit in the um, Lustre release number. Uh, so that's sort of, for example, Lustre 2.1, Lustre 2.2, those are examples of Lustre feature releases. Uh, also we have um, maintenance releases, which are uh, pr primarily bug fix releases. Those also include, you know, just keeping the releases current with things like kernel updates, but certainly no, no major changes of, of a feature nature. And so these are targeted on a given, a designated um, code line, and we produce those on a quarterly basis. And so uh, maintenance releases, you can tell because it is the third digit which is incremented. So examples of these would be 2.1.1 and 2.1.2. Um, so moving on with that in mind, moving on to the first code line, uh, Lustre 1.8x. So I have a few things I want to cover here. So uh, firstly, you know, uh, it, um, Lustre 180 came out in May 2009, and at that time it was announced that it would end of life in June of this year. Now, I think it's safe to say that um, we have somewhat different priorities nowadays, and so we've deprecated all, all idea of end of life in, in, in June. We certainly, you know, we know that many people are running a production on 1.8 releases and hope to do so for a long time yet, and we certainly intend to um, provide support to them on, on, on their 1.8 releases as long as, as there's sufficient demand to, to justify that. So we have no current plans to um, end of life the 1.8 code line, and um, if that changes, we'll certainly make sure we provide plenty of notice of that, and it won't be a, you know, by, you know, an overnight thing, it will be a gradual shift as, as people move on to more current releases. Um, then uh, my next point is that we are actually going to produce a, a 188WC1 release later this quarter. This was um, not previously scheduled. Um, we did recently announce that we had shifted our um, designated uh, maintenance release stream to be the 21X code line rather than 18X and of course Murphy's Law kicked in and about a week later we came to light that um, uh, newer hardware required um, Red Hat 6.2 which would have been fine because you can use that on 2.1.1 but the complexity is uh, there's uh, slightly reduced interoperability options between 1.8 and uh, 2x releases and so that meant it was going to be a headache for people to sort of upgrade and people would have been forced into the situation where they would have been you know had to accelerate their upgrade plans purely to add you know one or two new clients to an existing 1.8 cluster so anyway to sort of alleviate that situation we're doing you know an extra out of out of band release um, later this quarter um, primarily yeah, there will be a few bug fixes included as well just uh, sweeping up with um, you know the fixes we've had you know recently for 1.8 but um, the primary reason for that is to provide the uh, Red Hat 6.2 client support um, on the 1.8 stream. And finally, I did want to uh, clarify the situation. Uh, I, you know, I know that there is a bit of confusion about um, because Oracle have still been producing 1.8 releases, and they do have similar numbering to the WAM Cloud releases. Um, so I do keep in touch with Terry Rutledge um, and you know the Oracle team there um, with their plans. And I, I, I sort of discussed this with them ahead of time, but. Um, so basically, it's, uh, there are some slight differences between the releases, and the, the key thing to be aware of when uh, selecting a release to use, you know, the Oracle have been um, choosing the content of their releases uh, to meet the needs of their customers, and there has not necessarily been consideration uh, given to uh, upgrade 
for uh, until after two X releases. So, um, you know, when we're testing our interoperability, um, testing upgrades and downgrades, we're entirely using the WAM Cloud 1.8 releases. There's certainly been a number of fixes that have landed onto the you know WAM Cloud 1.8 stream um, to uh, deal with issues that were, were uncovered in our testing. So, you know, just you know definitely be uh, aware of that. So moving on to 2.1x, uh, last year when I presented at LUG, I did so on the 2.1 community release plans, and that release uh, went GA in September of last year. Um, then shortly after, we designated that as our um, uh, our maintenance release stream, and so in February of this year, we brought out a 2.1.1 release, which um, was mostly bug fixes, but also added uh, Red Hat 62 server and client support, and um, then we're due to later this quarter release a 212 release, which will uh, provide additional bug fixes. And um, we do have a number, uh, several large sites running um, 21x releases in production nowadays. And uh, you know, as they're um, exercising the code in new ways, new new access patterns. Um, different kinds of scale than we've we've been able to do in our testing. Naturally, issues are being unearthed, and we are getting those fixes landed and um, to the So, you know, I think it's fair to say that it's still relatively early days for the two one X code line. Um, consider that the one eight stream has been out for nearly three years now, and the two one X um, code line for you know just uh, just over six months. So. Uh, you know, we definitely saw this with earlier code lines. It takes a while to sort of shake out all the issues and stabilize. And I think most people who are running a 1.8 um, and loving the stability are doing so on a 1.8.3 or later release. And you know, I, I, I know that we'll be continuing to do 2.1x releases and um, uh, you know, many sites are running it today. And, and as subsequent releases come out, I certainly hope that we can confidently assert that we've uh, matched or surpassed the stability that people have grown accustomed to with 1.8x releases. So moving on to 2.2, um, I hope you're all aware that 2.2 was released several weeks ago on schedule. Um, this is the uh, first feature release to benefit from the OpenSFS funding, as, as uh, Gayla mentioned earlier on. And so I would just like to echo his comments that um, you know I know that uh, Many, you know, Luster sites are very supportive of Luster, love using Luster, and um, uh, but don't, you know, have the option to um, make support arrangements as a way of, um, you know, supporting our efforts. And but now there's, you know, a clear path to do so through OpenSFS um, membership. And so I hope those of you who whose organisations haven't done so already and give that some serious consideration. And the other things that uh, I wanted to mention um, as for, uh, for 2.2, but is equally applicable for our um, forthcoming releases, the next one being 2.3 in September, is um, that there's a whole range of options for you to keep abreast of, uh, abreast of uh, our progress as we, as we work through the release cycle. So that can range from, you know, at the low end to just sort of reading the quarterly reports, um, that go out on the OpenSFS uh, wiki and mailing list, um, um, or, or at the very high interest level, where you're, you know, following things dynamically um, in Jira as issues are reported, and seeing the fixes uploaded to Garrett, going through test results in Malu, and then seeing things as they land on Git. You know, all of that infrastructure is entirely open, so it, you know you you have complete access to see, you know, how things are progressing. So onto the uh, features themselves. So um, I've uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you. Know, these features were mostly developed um, due to uh, as part of NRE funding efforts from Oak Ridge, Livermore, and OpenSFS. So I'd like to thank those organisations for their um, investment in in, in Lustre's ongoing uh, development. And um, the exception to that actually was the. Uh, large exatas, or as it's more commonly known, uh, wide striping, and um, that was interesting. That was that was work that was um, a prototype of this was developed um, from funding by Oak Ridge uh, back in the Sun time frame, and but it was never that work wasn't productized and landed, 
And so, you know, as a result, there was, you know, not everyone was able to take advantage of this. And um, so we, we wanted to sort of make efforts to um, uh, get that work in a, in a sort of an official release so that, you know, everyone was able to take advantage. And so um, I, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Oak Ridge and uh, Zyrotex for their um, uh, collaborative support on that, on that effort. And I'm glad to say that we did manage to get that feature into 2.2. Um, there are certainly a, f a number of other features I'm aware of that are sort of in limbo in a similar manner. Um, and because the work is 90% there, it's, it's, it's hard to sort of, you know, get funding for that, but we'd certainly like to, um, you know, tidy up and make sure that that development effort doesn't go to waste. And, and so there's other things like that we are considering. And uh, the other thing I wanted to really spotlight here as well is that um, the uh, two of the features here listed are, um, are were subject to technical presentations last year, and um, at LUG, and and now we're here with them actually out in a generally available Lustre release. So um, I would, you know, I hope we we see this sort of thing repeated here. Um, and so that you know, technical presentations that you listen to over the next couple of days, again, you know, as of the roadmap, the, the um, Lustre release pipeline is flowing. We see those coming to fruition in, in, in release years when we um, reconvene next year. And I, I've included the um, Jira bug numbers and um, so you can go in to access um, supporting documentation um, for these uh, for these features, and there's most of these have um, test plans and uh, design docs attached to the Jira tickets, and uh, of course these are also in the manual. There's um, um, those those features which aren't completely transparent to the end user do have you know sections in the latest version of the manual which you can um, probably the simplest way to if you're not familiar with how to get it it's it's on Garris as we do updates but you can access it through the one cloud wiki and there's a Lustre documentation page that will help you find it. So um, here's a, a number of accomplishments that I you know, thought that may not be immediately apparent to these people who are not um, involved in these release activities day by day, but I still think are interesting to, to highlight. Firstly is the amount of um, effort we put into test automation with this on this release cycle. So this really helps us. You know, traditionally there's been a great deal of the, of the functional testing has been done manually and it is very time consuming to work through and is um, uh, at risk that, um, you know, individual, you know, pilot error can, can mean there's variability between test runs. Um, so we've put a lot of effort into automating a lot of this r repetitive testing so that it can be run, re you know, more reliably um, um, as things, you know, with every test landing, a lot of this testing that was traditionally only done as we got into the late stages of release cycle is now being run, and we, we hope to further uh, uh, further increase that. And, and that, in that really helps us with our ability to deliver releases on time, because the sooner you can catch regressions, the better. I mean, if you're only catching a regression, you know, after six months of development, to actually sort of work through and see what, what um, check-in affected it is, is, is very... You know, much more complicated. Uh, secondly, uh, we've added a reports facility to Malu, which aggregates uh, results from the test um, test database, and um, that again is a very useful tool to very quickly see patterns and trends and uh, in quality over time, and is is useful as well for for really as we are sort of converging on releases to to make sure we're moving in the right direction. Um, thirdly, I'd like to thank our our friends at Indiana University and, and ULISH for um, uh, donating test, um, test resources that we were able to use in the 2.2 um, cycle. Um, and on a similar note, to thank the Hyperion um, team. Uh, I mean, I, I mentioned in my presentation last year that I think that um, the advent of Hyperion, uh, which is a, a, um, a test cluster hosted at Livermore um, with um, equipment donated by a consortium of um, of uh, hardware vendors, and um, that that option basically gives us access to a sort of scale that we just don't have um, in our own internal resources, and really, um, uh, you know, helps us find 
it, uh, you know, issues that we just wouldn't find until things were running in production um, otherwise. And so that really, um, you know, that's, we use that routinely in our, in our scale for our scale testing and that's, um, you know, we really appreciate that. And um, finally, I wanted to um, mention the uh, uh, community development wiki. That uh, you know, with as we are getting uh, more diverse numbers of organisations being involved in um, Lustre development, there is the risk that there is either um, conflicting development where you know two independent development streams are actually you know not compatible, and that's if that's not caught early, that creates an awkward situation with a lot of rework on one or both parties um, required. Um, um, or it, you know, duplication of effort. And either way, it's basically inefficient for us as a community to operate like that. So this this wiki acts as a central um, location um, where people can, you know, exchange uh, information about what they're working on, express an interest, and allows the the potential to have um, people who are. Um, developing in similar areas to um, connect with each other and exchange ideas early in the in the um, in the stage of development so and, and I'm pleased to say that I've already heard of an instance where um, two organizations were, did have similar development goals and actually by virtue of this wiki were able to connect and collaborate rather than duplicate effort so you know I'm sure that will be increasingly essential as as time progresses uh, finally, this this is data. Um, this is the same data actually presented in three different ways. This is drawn from uh, Git check-ins, and um, so the middle one is perhaps the most straightforward. So this is looking at um, the engineers who actually made the change um, by organization, and you can see that there's you know we had ten different organizations who contributed to the last two two release. So I mean just to really emphasize. Um, you know the diversity going on in the in the um, Lustre development nowadays, and I think that we'll see that um, even more so with Lustre two three because there's you know names not on that chart now who have already had um, landings, on, um, which will be included in the two three release. And then the um, I'm going to get my left and right spelled up now, but the one to your left is um, the same data, but um, overlaying that with, this is basically the chart that I include in the quarterly OpenSFS reports. So it does have a OpenFS, OpenSFS um, leaning, and so organizations who are in both EOFS and OpenSFS are shown as OpenSFS, but I hope the point is clear that, um, you know, between WAM Cloud and the two community groups, um, virtually, you know, that's what's creating the releases. And um, finally, the other one is um, on your right is uh, a different slice of this data, and this is actually looking at the funding um, that's um, b b behind each landing. So just to sort of, you know, some of the uh, landings for the um, two two are of course um, NRE development projects, and the landing to the m the main branch is included as part of that. Um, so just to really, be, but as you can see, although that development um, may have many thousands of lines of code and be, you know, take months of development effort, the actual numbers of landings, that's not what is making up the bulk of these numbers. There is still an awful lot of work, which is the rest, which is that, um, the tree maintenance that Galen was referring to earlier on. So you can see, you know, where that, that money is going. And um, just to wrap up with the, um, the roadmap, so I'm not going to drill into details here too much because Andreas is on after me and he will be doing so. Um, but the uh, things I mostly wanted to um, emphasize here were the differences between, um, you know, traditionally there's been a great focus on the, the roadmap uh, as to what, it, you know, what's coming down the pipeline. But there, was, um, there wasn't really a great deal of confidence that the roadmap uh, matched reality. Um, now, I think that what we're really trying to move to is the um, having a conservative roadmap, which does, you know, either, you know, take a pessimistic view, if anything, of, of of what's going to be delivered. And so you can, and what's going to be reliable is that the the cadence of the feature releases. So, I mean, I think we have seen with uh, um, 
with 2.2, uh, both imperative recovery and the stat ahead um, features were originally scheduled for Lustre 2.3, and then as the development went at the sort of relatively, you know, well, we were actually able to include those in 2.2. Um, so that's definitely the way we'd like to operate, um, being conservative and over-delivering rather than having, you know, late disappointments. Um, obviously, there's always a risk that something crops up late in the, the day and certain features may in the future not be delivered as we hope, but, um, you know, we want to, you know, generally, you know, make that to the exception rather than the rule. And um, this roadmap isn't as well populated as, you know, it doesn't really reflect the full extent of Lustre development going on at the moment. So to do that, you really need to look at this roadmap in conjunction with the community development wiki. And um, you know that, and, and and then that shows features that are going on, and and you can get a better sense of you know what might be uh, end up being in releases, and and roughly what what um, timeline. So um, so just to recap again, so um, in this quarter we're planning to release a 188 WC1 and a 212 maintenance releases, and next quarter we'll have our. Two three um, two three feature release come out. So th there will of course be an extra maintenance release, most likely two one three. But um, you know we we tend to keep the specifics of which release just one ahead, just so we can keep our options open if we do. You know there is demand to um, uh, realign our um, our maintenance release stream. Okay, so that's my presentation. Are there any questions? Hi, is the mic here? Sorry, I don't know. So one of the questions I have is on, uh, will there be a maintenance release for 2.2? Oh, um, <laughs> that's a good question. I should have mentioned that I meant to, but I forgot. Um, so um, not every feature release necessarily has maintenance releases associated with it. Um, so it's not definite that there won't be. We don't have plans to do one right now. Um, but if the demand is that we should focus our efforts on producing maintenance, re maintenance releases for 2.2 rather than 2.1, you know, we certainly can do that. I mean, so th I mean, th with feature releases, I mean, you, you always have the option of applying patches to releases, right? So that's you know, we're still going to support people who are running in production on two two, no no question. Um, but um, if you're running on a feature release, you're right at the cutting edge of Lustre development, and you know, so it shouldn't be a, a great surprise if there's one or two, you know, issues that you know you need to to patch for. But yeah, um, and basically just. Um, the, the amount of effort to produce each releases, we just producing six monthly releases. If everyone had quarterly releases for two years, we'd be, <laughs> you know, just swamped by releases before too long. What the, going back, going back a couple of slides from here, um, what do the diagonals represent? The, do you mean the at diagonal arrows? That is representing that the feature releases can move up to be a maintenance release stream. So the features in 2.3 will make it to 2.1? No, it means that at some point 2.3, for example, could become the, the next maintenance release stream. Okay. Well, if anyone has any questions, you'd rather just ask me privately. I'm I'm around for the next few days and here for the Wednesday afternoon um, open SFS meetings as well. So please, you know, I'll be happy to answer your questions um, in person. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Please. Okay.